Lassen Peak, a volcano that violently exploded over a century ago is showing signs of reawakening. In early 2025 satellites orbiting hundreds of miles above Earth began detecting something extraordinary. The ground around Lassen was rising. At first scientists hoped it was a measurement error but week after week the data confirmed their worst fears. Today I'm taking you deep into the scientific evidence, the historical warnings we ignored and the potential catastrophe, and why this could affect millions of people across the West Coast. In January 2025 researchers announced new findings about the Cascade Range that surprised many geologists but the story looked nothing like the dramatic imagery often associated with imminent eruptions. A team led by Cornell University used a network of seismometers to image six Cascade volcanoes, including Lassen Peak, and found that persistent magma bodies remain beneath them even when the volcanoes are dormant. Rather than using satellites to watch for a sudden bulge, the scientists relied on scattered seismic waves from distant earthquakes which allowed them to map subsurface structures. What those images showed was not an expanding dome but a stable, long-lived melt zone. When news outlets referenced interferometric synthetic aperture radar NSAR, it was to note that earlier radar surveys from 1996-2010 detected subsidence. The ground around Lassen was slowly sinking at roughly 10 mm per year. That subtle downward motion confirmed by ground-based GPS measurements has continued for decades and is thought to be tied to tectonic processes rather than magma pushing upward. There was no confirmation from European Space Agency satellites or sudden acceleration toward an eruption. What makes the Cornell study significant is the lack of any dramatic surface change. The team found that magma bodies persist beneath volcanoes over their entire lifetime, not just during an active state. This discovery shifts the focus away from searching for concentric bullseye patterns of uplift and toward understanding long-term magma storage. Infrared imagery and other thermal data around Lassen Peak continue to reflect its well-known hydrothermal system, fumaroles, hot springs and mud pots but no new heat anomalies were reported. The U.S. Geological Survey continues to monitor Lawson Peak with a network of tilt meters, seismometers and GPS receivers, as it has for decades. Because the volcano is considered active, periodic instrument upgrades are part of ongoing hazard mitigation rather than responses to any sudden unrest. Historical eruptions in 1914-1917 remind scientists that Lawson Peak can erupt again, but current data show no accelerating deformation. Instead of a restless giant the picture painted by January 2025 research is one of a quietly simmering magmatic system, a reminder that dormant volcanoes hold more magma than once thought without necessarily signaling an imminent eruption. More than a century ago the sky over Northern California turned black. It was May 1915 when Lassen Peak, quiet for centuries, exploded with the force of a bomb. A column of ash rose 30,000 feet into the sky blotting out the sun. Entire forests vanished in minutes. The shockwave was felt nearly 200 miles away. Ranchers described boulders raining from the heavens. Streams boiled, ash drifted across Nevada. For days the world thought California's north was burning to the ground. That eruption was small compared to Yellowstone or Mount St. Helens. Yet it was enough to carve scars still visible today. The blasted cliffs, the burned valleys, the infamous devastated area where nothing grew for decades. Scientists back then had no satellites, no sensors, no warnings. People simply woke up one morning and watched the mountain explode. For generations geologists treated Lassen as history. They said it was cooling, dormant, quiet. But 2025 research has refined that belief. A seismic study by Cornell University and the U.S. Geological Survey showed that persistent magma bodies lie beneath several cascade volcanoes including Lassen, even when they are not erupting. These findings do not mean the conditions of 1915 are returning, rather they show magma can remain without triggering immediate unrest. Radar surveys have actually measured slow subsidence around Lassen, not swelling, and the hydrothermal vents long known in the park continue to steam without new fractures. The dome isn't rising it simply holds residual heat and gas from a living geothermal system. Scientists monitoring the site say that pressure and gas ratios have remained stable. Deep inside the volcanic edifice, Instruments record occasional microquakes, natural background rumblings in an active volcanic field, but nothing like the buildup before 1915. Each sensor is a reminder the mountain is watched. The ghost of 1915 is a lesson, and this time the world is watching with high-precision instruments rather than superstition. If you're still here, imagine standing at the edge of that caldera, feeling the wind whisper over quiet rock while knowing that beneath you, magma persists, 
as it has for millennia. Because when Lassen Peak finally exhales again, science not surprise will frame the story. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss our upcoming journeys. From a distance Lassen Peak looks deceptively calm, its snow-covered summit glistens in the morning light and hikers follow the trail to the top. Visitors may not sense it but scientists know this volcano is active with occasional earthquakes and hydrothermal features. Scientists watch Lassen Peak with a network of seismometers, satellite radar and gas sensors. When patterns on multiple seismometers coincide they indicate real earthquakes rather than noise. Hydrothermal vents and fumaroles show heat escaping but these features do not indicate magma rising. Recreational drones are banned in national parks, so thermal monitoring uses airborne infrared cameras operated for research under permits. Hazard assessments stress the potential consequences of future eruptions. As magma ascends and gas exsolves, explosive eruptions can produce pyroclastic flows, fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic debris that rush downhill at more than 80 km h reach temperatures between 200 and 700 dal and are impossible to outrun. They carry rocks and ash that topple trees and structures. The 1914 Toledo 17 sequence illustrates these hazards. On 19 May 1915, an avalanche of hot rock triggered a lahar that raced over 18 kilometers down Lost Creek. Three days later a column rose high into the sky, a pyroclastic flow devastated land up to 6 kilometers away and lahars raced more than 20 kilometers down Lost and Hat Creeks. Fine ash drifted hundreds of kilometers east to Elko, Nevada. The Lawson Volcanic Center remains a high-threat volcano, but scientists emphasize that it is currently quiet and that increased seismicity, uplift and gas emissions would provide weeks to months of warning before any future eruption. For many years scientists thought Lassen Peak was a lone volcano, a leftover from earlier eruptions with no active link to nearby mountains. Then in 2025 advanced seismic imaging changed that belief. Deep tomography revealed a massive underground magma corridor stretching north toward Mount Shasta and south toward the Hat Creek Fault Zone. This corridor seems to function like a channel that moves molten rock, gas and heat across vast distances. It forms a geological pathway connecting California's volcanic core to the Greater Cascade Arc. The same deep network also supplies volcanoes like Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood and Crater Lake. Seismic studies have detected faint rhythmic waves moving through this corridor in rhythm with Lassen's dome expansion cycles. This means that pressure building beneath Lassen could in theory affect nearby volcanoes, and they might affect Lassen in return. If these volcanoes are truly connected, one eruption might set off others, creating a cascading chain of volcanic events across the region. The last time the Cascade Range acted as one linked system was thousands of years ago, long before written history. Now scientists are urgently working to trace the full reach of this magma corridor. What they uncover could transform how we understand volcanic hazards along the west coast. When magma begins to rise, it doesn't stay quiet, it speaks through gas. Lately that quiet voice at Lassen has become much louder. Gas sensors placed around the volcano have detected a sharp rise in sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide levels the well-known signs that magma is moving closer to the surface. These gases act as chemical clues of volcanic unrest. At night, thermal cameras reveal faint rings of heat circling the summit vents. Some plumes can't be seen by the human eye, but drones flying overhead record their glow-thin streaks of light weaving through the darkness. Where steam escapes through cracks, sulfur crystals gather and turn the rocks bright yellow. Birds have left the crater's edge, and the nearby plants show damage from the acidic gas. Geochemists warn that the changing gas ratios, especially the rise in sulfur dioxide, point to the arrival of new magma. This means the volcano is not just warming, it is being replenished. The volcano is speaking. The question now is how long it will keep speaking before it begins to roar. Lassen Peak is crowned with snow and ice for much of the year, its white summit a stark contrast to the dark forests below. This frozen cap makes the mountain beautiful, but it also makes it deadly. When a volcano covered in snow and ice erupts the results can be catastrophic in ways that go far beyond the eruption itself. The danger lies in lahars, volcanic mudflows that form when eruptions melt snow and ice mixing the water with volcanic ash and debris to create a fast-moving slurry with the consistency of wet concrete. Lahars can travel at speeds exceeding 50 miles per hour, and they can flow for tens of miles down river valleys, destroying everything in their path. They're denser than water, which gives them tremendous destructive power. They can carry boulders the size of cars, 
demolish bridges and bury entire communities under meters of mud, La Sin Peak holds an estimated 50 million cubic meters of snow and ice on its slopes. If even a fraction of this melted during an eruption, it would generate lahars of unprecedented scale. Computer models show that lahars originating from Lesson could reach the Sacramento River Valley within hours, threatening communities that have no idea they're in a volcanic hazard zone. The 1915 eruption produced lahars that traveled over 20 miles, but the mountain held less snow then than it does now. Climate patterns have changed, and Lassen now accumulates more snow during winter months. This means that a similar eruption today could produce even larger and more destructive mudflows. The speed at which lahars can form is terrifying. When the pyroclastic flow from the 1915 eruption swept down the mountain, it melted snow and ice almost instantaneously. Within minutes a wall of mud and debris was racing down Hat Creek, growing larger as it picked up more material. Witnesses described a roaring sound like a freight train, followed by a wave of mud that swept away everything in its path. Trees were uprooted, buildings were demolished, and the landscape was transformed beyond recognition. Today the areas that would be affected by lahars are far more developed than they were in 1915. Highways, power lines, water treatment facilities and residential areas all lie within potential lahar paths. The economic damage from a major lahar event could reach into the billions of dollars, and the loss of life could be substantial if evacuations aren't conducted in time. Emergency managers have begun mapping lahar hazard zones and developing evacuation plans, but the challenge is immense. Lahars can form with little warning, and once they start moving there's almost no time to escape if you're in their path. The only effective strategy is to evacuate potential impact zones before an eruption occurs, but that requires accurate prediction of when and where an eruption will happen, something that remains extremely difficult even with modern monitoring technology. Inside the offices of the U.S. Geological Survey's California Volcano Observatory, a map of Lassen Peak hangs on the wall. It's covered in colored zones, each representing a different level of volcanic hazard. Over the past year those colors have been changing and not in a good direction. Areas that were once marked in yellow indicating low to moderate risk have been upgraded to orange. The inner zones closest to the summit have turned red. Red means imminent danger. It means that if the volcano erupts, everything in that zone will likely be destroyed. It means no one should be there. In early 2025, the red zone extended about 2 kilometers from the summit. By mid-year it had expanded to 5 kilometers. If current trends continue, it could reach 10 kilometers by the end of the year, encompassing parts of Lassen Volcanic National Park that see thousands of visitors annually. Park officials have already closed several trails and restricted access to the summit area, but these closures have been implemented quietly to avoid causing panic. Signs cite trail maintenance or wildlife protection rather than volcanic hazards. The truth is being carefully managed to prevent economic disruption to the region which depends heavily on tourism. But scientists know that if the volcano's behavior continues to escalate, more drastic measures will be necessary. Beyond the park boundaries, several small communities sit within potential impact zones. Mineral Chester and Mill Creek are all within 15 kilometers of the volcano, close enough to be affected by pyroclastic flows, lahars, or heavy ashfall. These towns have a combined population of several thousand people, most of whom have lived there for decades without giving much thought to volcanic risk that's beginning to change. Local emergency management agencies have started conducting volcanic hazard awareness campaigns, distributing information about evacuation routes and emergency supplies. Some residents are taking the threat seriously, preparing go bags and making plans to leave quickly if necessary. Others remain skeptical, pointing out that the volcano has been quiet for over a century, and arguing that scientists are overreacting. This tension between scientific concern and public complacency is one of the biggest challenges in volcanic risk management. People have short memories and even shorter attention spans. The 1915 eruption is ancient history to most residents, something that happened to their great-grandparents, not something that could happen to them. Convincing people to take precautions based on subtle changes in seismic activity and ground deformation is difficult when the mountain looks the same as it always has. But the scientists monitoring Lawson don't have the luxury of complacency. They see the data every day. They watch the graphs trending upward, the earthquake counts increasing, the gas emissions rising. They know that every indicator is pointing in the same direction, toward an eruption. The question isn't if, but when, and whether they'll have enough warning to get people out of harm's way. At sunrise Lassen Peak appears eternal. 
its snow-covered dome glowing with golden light, quiet and unmoving. But beneath that peaceful surface, every instrument tells the same story. The mountain is alive. Deep below, the magma chamber grows hotter and heavier, pressing against the rocks that contain it. Scientists call this the breathing phase, when the Earth seems to inhale before releasing the force of an eruption. For California, that release could have enormous effects. A single powerful eruption at Lassen could cover the Central Valley with ash, disrupt air travel and send energy waves across the entire Cascade Range. Still within this danger lies something remarkable, a rare view into the living heart of our planet. Every crack, tremor and plume of steam proves that Earth is not fading. So where does this leave us? Scientists are careful not to make definitive predictions because volcanoes are inherently unpredictable. The same warning signs can lead to a major eruption, a minor steam explosion, or nothing at all. The magma rising beneath Lassen could reach the surface and erupt explosively. It could stall at shallow depth and slowly cool without erupting, or it could continue to intrude and deform the mountain for months or years before finally breaking through. What we do know is that the current level of activity at Lassen Peak is unprecedented in the modern monitoring era. We've never had this much data about what happens inside a cascade volcano before an eruption. Every measurement, every earthquake, every gas sample is being recorded and analyzed, building a database that will help scientists understand not just Lassen but volcanic systems around the world. The monitoring network around Lassen is now one of the most sophisticated in the United States. Dozens of seismometers, GPS stations, gas sensors and cameras are continuously streaming data to research centers where teams of scientists watch for any change that might indicate an imminent eruption. If Lassen does erupt, we'll have more warning than any previous generation, but whether that warning will be hours, days or weeks remains uncertain. For the people living in the shadow of this sleeping giant, the message is clear. Stay informed, have a plan, and be ready to act quickly if authorities issue evacuation orders. The mountain that has been a peaceful neighbor for over a century is waking up, and when it fully opens its eyes the world around it will change forever. This isn't just a story about one volcano in Northern California. It's a reminder that we live on a dynamic planet where the ground beneath our feet is constantly moving, shifting and evolving. The forces that built the mountains can also tear them down. The same geological processes that create beautiful landscapes can also unleash devastating destruction. Lassen Peak is speaking to us through earthquakes, through rising ground, through the gases it exhales into the atmosphere. The question is whether we're listening, whether we're taking the warning seriously, and whether we're prepared for what might come next. Because beneath that beautiful snow-capped summit, beneath the forests and the lakes and the peaceful trails, something ancient and powerful is stirring. And when it decides to wake fully, California and the world will be watching. The shocking truth about what's happening beneath California's sleeping giant mountain is this. It's not sleeping anymore. Lassen Peak is in the early stages of volcanic unrest, displaying warning signs that mirror those seen before major eruptions throughout history. The magma chamber is recharging, the lava dome is inflating, the ground is cracking, and gases are rising from the deep. Every scientific indicator points toward increased volcanic activity, and while we can't predict exactly when or how Lassen will erupt, we can say with confidence that the risk is real and growing. This is a developing situation that could have profound implications not just for Northern California, but for the entire Western United States. It is alive, active and always reshaping its own story. If you're still listening take this as more than a warning. Take it as a reminder, the ground beneath our feet is never still, it moves, it breathes, and one day soon it may roar once more. So stay alert, stay ready and keep watching, because the next tremor might not come from Yellowstone or rainy air, it might come from Lassen Peak. If you found this information valuable make sure you're subscribed to this channel because I'll be following this story closely and bringing you updates as new data emerges. Drop a comment below and let me know, did you know about the volcanic risk at Lassen Peak? Are you concerned about volcanic hazards in your area? I read every comment and I'm genuinely curious about your thoughts on this unfolding situation. For more information about volcanic hazards and how to prepare for geological emergencies check out the resources I've linked in the description below. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.